roads are so intense, I don't actually know how I'm going to be able to cross it. Just arrived at apartment 42, which is a very iconic building here in Ho Chi Minh City. In the 1950s and 1960s, mostly US military and government officials lived in this building. I need to check my facts. But now it is filled with a range of different cafes, uh, different fashion stores, different eateries, and it's like a little chocolate box of different shops and we're gonna be going up to check it out in just a bit. There is an elevator, but you have to pay 3,000 dong to actually use it. And if you spend money in any of the cafes or any of the shops, then you get that refunded. Um, I'm pretty interested to check it out. It seems really, really cool. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're about to do. The interesting thing is we paid our money and then there's a sign that says uh, most restaurants and cafes will refund the 3,000 dong. But the thing is they didn't give us a receipt or anything so how would they know whether we've actually paid that money? Um, anyway, we decided to go up to the very top floor and just make our way down so we don't have to like go up any more stairs. So this is the ninth floor. It seems like there are some accessory shops and there is one Thai food shop. Um, I don't think that we can actually take the lifts because I noticed that when I try to press on one of the numbers, it didn't light up. So we're just going to be walking down every level and seeing what we can actually find. Oh wow, okay, check out these views right here. Okay, we're currently at Orient Tea and this place sells a huge variety of Chinese teas. But the one tea that they ran out, which is the one that I really wanted to try, is Pu'er Tea. And like, you know how when like you really wanted to try something and then they don't have it, and the fact that they don't have it makes you want to try it even more? That's currently how I feel right now. I want to know how good it is that they would have ran out. But it's okay, I've got myself an orange peel tea that hopefully helps with my voice and my cough in this cute little tiny teapot. This is what's inside. It's actually really, really hot to hold. It literally tastes like the orange peel and they added a bit of pepper and they added hot water. I don't actually know what the ingredients is, but I'll go and check later to see how correct I am. We also ordered these little, um, they're called pineapple biscuits. The exterior is like a shortbread type thing. And this is what it looks like on the inside. I know why this taste is so familiar is because it tastes exactly like the Taiwanese pineapple cake. It's still that, you know, really short paste on the outside and the, and the pineapple jelly on the inside. I do notice that this tastes a lot more ginger. It has like more ginger than the Taiwanese one that I'm used to, but otherwise this is actually really, really delicious. I really like it. crazy is how different each of the stores can be like there you see a bar you see a shop that was selling frog porridge and frog pot rice and then you have coffee shops you have tea shops you have a homestay you have people selling um, you know doing your nails it's crazy like it's incredible how different all these shops are but they're in such close vicinity of each other
We've just arrived at this restaurant called Com Tam. Essentially what it translates to is literally called broken rice. Broken rice is actually a really popular sort of comfort food here in Vietnam. How it originated is that previously this was considered poor people's food because the broken rice is literally what it is. It's the broken parts of a full grain of rice. Thank you so much. And previously because they were imperfect, they, they couldn't be sold off. But over the years people became more and more fond of the broken rice. It had a very distinct texture and it tastes just as good. So much so that now people purposely break the rice so that they can get broken rice. I got myself a lemongrass pork. I just want to taste the broken rice on its own to see how different it is to the rice that I typically eat at home. Okay, to be completely honest, the taste, it tastes very, very similar to like the jasmine grain rice that I usually have at home. The only difference is the texture. It's a little chewier and the grains just feel smaller. That's that's how it feels like to me and it's a little bit stickier as well. But other than the texture, the taste is like exactly the same. And the pork is absolutely delicious. It tastes exactly like how it should. Very strong lemongrass flavor. Okay, so we've also got crab cake to try. So it's like an orange exterior and then inside it's a bunch of different things. I can definitely taste the crab. I can taste a little bit of egg as well. I like it. I wish I had more. And now for dessert, we're going to try the banana and coconut cream. It has like sprinkles of peanuts on top. I'm so excited because none of this has dairy, which means that it is completely fine with my intestines. A bite with everything with coconut cream, banana and peanuts. I like the idea of it. Like the concept of it is really, really good. It has so much potential to be such an amazing dessert. The only thing is the banana is not very ripe. This is not mushy at all. It's like a, it's like a little bit dried, but like not fully dried. So it's like in between a normal banana and banana chips. It's like in that process of becoming a banana chip and, and this is what it is. But having said that, the coconut cream, that is delicious. If I can just have like a small bowl and then I can just like spoon it out. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. And then this was the moment when a hero that I didn't even know I needed came through. A very kind man probably saw us struggling. We were literally just towing the road. I don't even know if that's a word, but we would like step out and be like, no, 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 okay, maybe, maybe just another minute. Let's watch this for another minute. And then we would repeat this process like five to 10 times. And I think he saw how much we were struggling and he knew that we probably had no chance of crossing that road. And so he came over, he waved at us, and then he gestured for us to follow him. He came to my left-hand side, he put his hand out, like it was like, you know, gesturing for the motorcycles to slow down, and he just stepped out onto the road. He stepped out onto the road and then he gestured for me to follow him and I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna do whatever you tell me to do. So it's just like sticking as close to him as possible and then he'd be like, stop to the motorcycles and then he'd let the cars pass. And the whole time he was walking at a very controlled, relaxed pace. And then when we got to the middle of the intersection, because that road is so long, cars started coming in from the right. And he was initially standing on my left, but he just casually strolled to my right and stood in the direction of traffic and put his hand out again and then gestured for us to, you know, walk. Honestly, I am so 
grateful and thankful that he was there. I know for a fact that I would not have been able to cross that road if it weren't for him. I would have just taken the detour that would have took me an extra, you know, 20, 25 minutes because I just, I didn't know how to cross that road. It was, for lack of a better word, really overwhelming. But I just crossed my first road in Vietnam and it was the scariest thing in my life. Okay, there was this very, very nice man that took us under his wing and showed us how to do it. But whoa, I've never been so close to a, to a, to a bunch of moving cars and motorcycles as I crossed the road before. That was definitely an experience. Am I just a chicken? I don't even know. Okay, anyway, we crossed the road. Everything's fine. Anyway, that is it for today. If you're a local in Vietnam or you've been to Vietnam before, let me know in the comments below what are some of your tips on crossing roads in Vietnam. I still haven't mastered it and I don't think I'll get any better at it in the meantime. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Um, I post new videos every Tuesdays and Fridays, so check them out if you have time. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification button if you haven't already. I hope you have an amazing weekend and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.